Welcome to your next mission video podcast. We have something completely different for you today. Hey, sorry to bother you, but my husband's deployed. Can you watch my kids real quick? Great, they'll be back in nine months. That was Ashley Goodermuth, comedian and military spouse. Today, Ashley is gonna show us how the power of laughter can change people's lives. Get ready, this is gonna be fun. Welcome to Your Next Mission podcast with the 12th Sergeant Major of the Army and co-founder of the American Freedom Foundation, Jack L. Tilly. Hello out there, warriors, past and present, your families, and thank you for your service to our great country. Now, before we get started, I personally want to thank our presenting sponsors, Calvary Agency, Navy Federal Credit Union, Purdue University Global, and Veterans United Home Loans for, for making Your Next Mission happen. They love our veterans and families. I don't care what anybody says. I'm going to say this every week. We love them too. We have an incredible show for you today. And I'm so excited to introduce Ashley Goodermuth. I got it correct. Comedian, military spouse. <laughs> <laughs> and who was recently featured in Military Times and Stars and Stripes magazine. Ashley, so good to have you on the show. Thank you so much, Sergeant Mayor. It's wonderful to see you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Hey, I know everybody. I'm, I'm pumped up to hear a lot about you. I've been reading stuff about you and seeing you peek over that fence and all the pumping iron and doing all that stuff. Uh, a lot of people want to, you know, they want to know a little bit more about you. Could, so can you tell the audience about yourself? Don't take 12 hours now. Take, you know, I know what you want to talk. No, go ahead. Oh, yeah. No, 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 no problem. Yeah, I am a, a small dairy farmer from the Midwest. No, I am a <laughs> stand-up comedian. Uh, I'm an actor and a voice actor and military spouse. All right. That's it. That's all you do. You don't have to cut to that short. Anything else? Anything, any, anything in there? I, well, oh, you know what else I do? I have uh, some obsessions. I run every day. I've ran, I have one of the longest running streaks in the world. I have ran every day for uh, over eight years. Without missing a day, people will say, well, you know, what if you're sick? What if you, uh, you know, like I've, I've ran with food poisoning. I've ran with COVID and, and uh, I fell on a gopher hole once. I got hit by a car twice. Uh, still kept, kept the streak going. Um, but yeah, I do. I have the 803rd longest running streak in the world. Now, I used to have the 600th, but then 200 people lied. And that's just, that's not fair. Oh, that, 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 <laughs> you know, that was one of the questions. I'm going to ask you that. I'm going to ask you that question a little while later, but I, that's incredible. <laughs> you know, I used to run when I was in the army, but I'd run in like three to five miles. But uh, if I could take a day off, I'd take a break. That's for sure. Ashley, yeah. being a comedian got to be, you know, got to be one of the most vulnerable jobs that you can have. What made you decide to, you know, to do this, to be a comedian? What made you decide? Oh, to it's got to have been a traumatic childhood, right? That's what, that's, what, that's what leads to it. I had an army dad, so, you know, what could you do? Yeah. Uh, he's, like, he's like, MREs, you're taking that to school for lunch. Um, I, uh, I always wanted to be a comedian, and I always did things to try to make people laugh, just uh, constantly. So, and, I, and I would try to do, like, things, acting and, and things like that in school. Um, but anything to bring attention to myself was definitely popular. And I grew up, so both my parents were helicopter mechanics, my mom and my dad. And so I would go to work with them all the time. And they kind of worked, uh, you know, they'd work at airports. It was a little bit far away. So when they would get called out in the middle of the night, I would go with them and we would listen to comedy uh, for, you know, hours, several nights a week. And so I grew up on Monty Python and all types of British comedy, yeah. which is what, actually what I know more about than American styles. Yeah, you, you know what, when I was small, I, I thought I wanted to be a singer, uh, but I never made it. Oh. I, you know, I tried it, but every time I'd sing, people would just throw me out, so I don't know. The, the, <laughs> the fact that you're a military spouse is a big part of your comedy. Uh, why, do you think you, why do you think you really went in that direction? I think you just probably talked about it, you know, riding in the, you know, with your parents going to uh, work on uh, helicopters and stuff, but, but why? Um, so the reason why I started incorporating military humor into um, my just regular, uh, into my stand-up and also into the videos that I make to put on my social media is I, I, I made one where I said, just out of the blue, I thought, what if I told people that there's a, a military wife paycheck? 
And so I just made a very serious video where I said that there was a military wife paycheck and uh, it sh you should be getting it once a month. And if your husband's not bringing that home to you, then you need to contact his commander. <laughs> and I <laughs> saw so many people get so excited and uh, just uh, it's just, you know, they knew that it was fake, you know, the, all this fake advice, but they also there's this tension, right? The attention of, of always trying to fit in. It's a, it's a hard thing to be in a military family and to be in the military. Yeah. When you think about it, there's a lot of like weird stuff. I live on a military base, which means that all of the people that work with my husband or uh, and their families, they, they're like our neighbors. It's weird to have your boss be your neighbor. You know, <laughs> things like that that create these checks and balances. So we're always operating in this place of of tension to make sure that uh, people don't do things that screws up security clearances or, or jobs yeah. or job opportunities. Yeah. And just playing with that a little bit makes people laugh. Well, you know, it's you know, I stayed in the army. I think I told you before. I stayed in the army in the army now for 36 years, and and really, it's a small community. People think it's large. It, it's a lot. You know, the army is about 1.3 million, but but it's a small community, and and if you live on a military installation, you you know everybody, and everybody knows you, and so yeah. it's, uh, it's really fun. You, we said earlier that the power of laughter changes people's lives. Do you, do you hear that from a, a lot of military spouses that your that your comedy is making a difference in their lives? I'm sure it is. Um, I do. You know, uh, there definitely are a group of people military spouses, military families, and military in general that don't feel heard. Uh, so by making jokes and including them in jokes, it makes them feel like their experiences are not so unusual and makes it a little bit easier. And one of my best examples of how we all sort of experienced the same thing came about when I made a video where I pretended that I was talking to somebody, my friend on the phone, and I said, so you went on a date with an army guy, huh? All right, well, um, did you did you see his ankles? Uh, did he did he have any hair on his ankles? <laughs> and then when she tells me that he didn't have he he had plenty of hair on his ankles, like well he's not in the army then. There's no way. <laughs> and the amount of people in the military that came back to me saying, I thought it was just me that was missing that weird patch of hair. <laughs> it never grows back. <laughs> <laughs> so that kind of like bonds everybody. You know, you're all kind of going through different things and the same things. And it's, so it's interesting. You, you know, it's funny you say that because I used to go around and I'd, I'd bump into people. And I remember, uh, you know, as a sergeant major in the Army, I'd, I'd visit a lot of different installations. I could tell you some really funny stories. But I'll, I'll tell you, this, I'll try to make it quick. But I, I was in a, a Kansas City airport. I was walking down through the airport and I seen these four soldiers. They seen me. I seen them and I said, geez, you know, senior enlisted guy for the army. They found they knew who I am. And so I, yeah. and so, so I, I walked up to him and I says, hey, do you know who I am? I, I said, wait a minute. I says, hey, guys, how you doing? Fine. I said, uh, 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 he said, who are you? Well, I says, well, what, you have a book that shows the army rank structure. The guy says, this is no joke. Though. He says, yup, I sure do. I said, well, could I <laughs> see the book? The guy said, yup, you, you sure can. So I opened the book up and I said, uh, uh, see that rank right there? And he says, yup, I sure do. I says, uh, that's the rank of a specialist in the Army, isn't it? He said, yup, it sure is. I said, see that right there? He said, yup, I sure do. I said, that's the rank of the Sergeant Major of the Army. He said, yup, it sure is. I said, that's me. He said, no shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, it wasn't over there. He said, prove it. I said, prove it. Prove it. I said, yeah, he said, prove it. I said, what do you mean? He said, you got an ID card? And I said, yup, I sure do. Yep, I sure do. So, so anyway, so I pulled my ID card out. He looked at the ID card, looked at me, and he finally said, no shit, glad to meet you. So that's my no shit. You got <laughs> but, uh, but I love it. Uh, well, yeah, but laughter is fun. I mean, if you can get somebody to laugh, I mean, I used to, I used to laugh a lot. or try to laugh a lot. But, you know, unfortunately, a lot of the jobs that they do in the military, you can't laugh. You know, it's serious stuff. But there has to be a time where you let your hair down a little bit and you laugh and relax. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes we're so focused on, uh, you know, on, on our mission, which we need to be, uh, you know, it's, it's just the way it is. So, so, so what you're doing, yeah. uh, just from this old guy right here, I would tell you that uh, you're, probably, uh, you're probably changing people's lives. You know what I mean? Well, thank you. Well, yeah, uh, could you make a difference? Uh, People that laugh, you know, there's so many struggles in life. I mean, just laughter is, 
is it's such mm -hmm. a neat thing anyway. So I don't get too serious about that, but it's it's good. I, I God bless you for what you're doing. I watched a lot of your videos, and let's check out a couple of them right now. Janine, I was hoping you could make me the happiest man on this porch. There's no diamonds in it because I already maxed out my military star card, but I can add you so you can get fuel discounts. You haven't even heard what I have to offer, okay? In exchange for a long three-year marriage that will end bitterly, I can offer you a gift certificate to Taco John's. Please get me out of the barracks, Janine. I sleep next to a guy named Mittens, and he does not have soft hands. He just got out of basic. How does he have a medal of honor? Are you kidding me? Are you whispering? Every one of you has tinnitus. You don't need to say Roger Wilco. Babe, babe, I've deployed there. It's pretty nice. They just caught a C-130 H J model. Moron. Babe, I thought that mortar blast was on TV, but it was on the range here. Kids are practicing. 19-year-old Admiral, that makes sense. He probably went to the academy. Think I'm blown up is scary? Try getting your travel voucher paid through DTS. You know, those are really funny. Do you find that a lot of your friends and audience also has a, a military connection? Uh, they do, definitely. A lot of them have some sort of connection to the military, but what surprises me is how many people don't. Um, I would almost go to say that there's more people that don't have a military connection, but they support the military, yeah. and therefore they want to know more about the world uh, that we live in. And I feel like that that to me is the power for us to sort of come together almost as a country in a way yeah. through humor and through uh, opening up the world a little bit because I like I'll talk to my friends that are comedians that have no military background and I'll say oh I was at this this event there is this general there and they'll look at me and they're like I don't know what that is and or I'll use an acronym that just like peace I'll say I'm PCSing yeah and which seems normal to me but they're just like who are you what do you <laughs> just talk like a normal person um, but I think that opening that world a little bit, you know what, especially when I go to um, formal events and I will uh, videotape a little bit of, say, the Honor Guard or yeah. the National Anthem or, or somebody getting an award, it, people send me messages telling me that they were crying, uh, that they've never been able to see those types of ceremonies. They had no idea that's the things, those are the types of things that we do. Um, and it really moved them. So I think opening up that, taking the veil away will really impact a lot of people. Oh, there's no, you know, the, like I said before, the military is really small and, uh, and most people uh, don't necessarily see active duty uh, military at all. Uh, they see the National Guard and reserves and stuff when they're, when they're traveling and they're, and they're military too, but, but they don't really see active duty service members. To follow up, how much of your military, how much of your material comes from uh, real life or just observing others? I'm sure it all does probably, right? Oh, yeah. You'll see me if I, I'll be in the middle of a conversation with somebody and they'll say something and then I'll pick up my phone and I'm not texting somebody else. I'm writing that down word for word so that I can use it later on. If it made me laugh or I said something that made them laugh and I think, oh, I can use that. You, That's really important as a comedian and as a writer that immediately you write it down. And it's annoying because you'll be wanting to go to sleep. And uh, there's Mitch Hedberg, if you remember him, great comedian. Yeah. Uh, he he had a line that said, I'm going to butcher it, but it was something to the effect of, I, I lay in bed at night and I think of jokes and then I just convince myself that they're really bad so I don't have to wake up and write them down. <laughs> and that that happens all the time where you, you're like, oh, I'll remember it. You never will remember no. it. You have to write it down within 15 seconds. Yeah. That's all you got. Yeah. I, 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 I don't want to say how old I am, but I'm a little bit older than you. And, and I would tell you right now that if, if, if I think of something, I better write it down or put it in my phone or whatever, because uh, I just I just can't remember. I mean, even to, just on day to day, mm -hmm. so many things just sort of flow away. And uh, I, but, you yeah. know, there's really one thing that's really funny. If my wife tells me something, if she says, go to the store and pick this up. By the time I get to the store, I've actually got to call her back. Now, what did you want? And she gets, <laughs> and she gets, and she gets so, she gets so mad about it. Says, come on, how come, how come you remember everything else, but you can't remember what I sent you to the store for? I said, I, I, I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But she knows now it's just routine. I that's go to funny. the store. I just call. Now, now I have an older son that's, uh, 
that's handicapped. And uh, he's really a smart young man. So, but uh, she normally now tells him what to get. And when we go to the store, uh, he reminds me what to get. So he, he's squared away a guy. Ashley, I can. You got a system. Oh, I, 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 I got to have some kind of system because uh, I just am a, a, I don't know if I'm a normal guy, uh, a normal husband. I'm sure most husbands listen to their spouses. That, that's another thing. Are you in charge of the house or is your husband in charge? Are you in charge or your husband? Not necessarily the house or anything. Are you in charge? <laughs> Tell the truth. Um, don't lie to me. I, oh my God, I would imagine that he would definitely say uh, yes. I, um, I, I guess whew, I don't do well when I don't get my way. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the the uh, I, I've been married a long time, and and I don't know how it happens, but maybe it was a, like the first day or the second day. I know it wasn't very far into my marriage that somehow everything was reversed that I no longer had a, you know, authority to make any kind of decisions. Uh, we built a house, uh, in my, and I, I mean, I've been married long enough now, I, I know how to work with my wife a little, hopefully I do a little bit, but we, we <laughs> built a house and she says, what do you think about that? And I said, what do you think about that? She said, no, I want your honest opinion. Well, uh, what do you think about that? I am not gonna make a decision that puts me in jeopardy. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> I'm not. Your, your risk management no, here. I, <laughs> I'm really afraid of her. That's I, smart. Uh, I'm afraid of her. I'm afraid she's, I don't, I don't know why I'm afraid I can beat her up. I think I can take her anyway, but, but I'm afraid of her. That's, is that normal? My money is on her. <laughs> uh, I, you know, it's funny when I, when my husband and I first got, got together, I accidentally broke one of his ribs. <laughs> um, and I did. I broke one of his ribs. Turns out I married a man with flimsy ribs, Sergeant Major. Uh, <laughs> so I have done boxing. I love boxing. Yeah. I love Muay Thai, all kinds of things like that. And so I had trained in it for yeah. a while. And then we did that thing. You know, when you get together, you're like, okay, you punch me in the stomach. All right. Now, but me punching somebody in the stomach is a square off yeah. one and then hook. Yeah. And he wasn't anticipating the hook. Accidentally broke his rib. It was consensual but he did have to sleep on his side for, <laughs> for a few months. Let, let me ask you a question. Oh, well, did, did you take I, him to the hospital and did they say, we need to call the MPs or SPs or whatever? Oh, uh, we didn't go to the hospital. He sucked that up. He just sucked it up. He's, he's, he sucked it up. Yeah, he's, uh, he was just like, it's just going to hurt for a few months. And I thought, well, that's nice because it'll every time it hurts, it'll remind you of me. Well, let me ask you a question. Was this <laughs> recently or this a few years ago? Or No, no, that was years ago. Yeah, he's he's safer now. And, and, and yeah. he's safer? <laughs> he won't let me hit him anymore. Well, well the thing is, probably every time you say something, he flinches real quick back there. Oh, no, I didn't yeah, do that. He does. does he flinch? Oh no, he doesn't. He does, no, no, he doesn't. Does. No more. He just he just refuses to hold even the boxing pads for me. He was just like, I'm not doing it. You can go hire somebody. That's enough. <laughs> you know, I think it's interesting. You know, talking about roles being reversed. I'm sure you deployed a lot. Yeah, absolutely. And when uh, when that starts to happen, you as a military spouse, you take on both roles, especially if you you know if you have kids. Oh, yeah. You take you immediately take on so much responsibility. That, so, like, I'll hear all the time, spouses, my my uh, husband or wife was gone for six months, and then they come back, and then uh, they expect everything to be the same, when in reality, the reintegration can be harder yeah. than the time away, because you're rolling into the house, you're, you're, you think everything's going to be the same, uh, and there's a lot of experienced military families that'll say, okay, you can have three days, after three days, you know, we're, we're going to go back into the routine. But you have to, in order to survive as a family, somebody's got to kind of take charge. Yeah, well, they, they, they now, I, they probably do in the Navy too, but they, in the Army, they give classes how to transition back to your house, mm -hmm. you know, because it, it's, uh, it's really yeah. tough. I, I, you talked about deployment, I've been deployed. I, I was in and out of Afghanistan about 16 times, uh, Iraq three, oh, wow. uh, fighting in the streets of Saigon when I was 18. I was in the Pentagon for 9-11. Overran once in the military, overran 20, uh, 20 wounded and seven killed. So. Yeah, I've been deployed quite a bit. I know just based on what I just told you, I don't want to deploy anymore. I don't want to shoot at anybody no more. I, I want to laugh, have fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ashley. That's right. Oh, you're so motivated. You got me pumped up. I can't do, I don't know what I'm going to do next here. <laughs> Hold that thought. I'll be right back here. We're talking with Ashley Gutermuth, the comedian and military spouse. And you're watching 
your next mission video podcast with me, your host, Jack L. Tilly, 12th Sergeant Major Army. And don't forget, if you're enjoying this discussion, if you're not enjoying this discussion, turn the channel. Something's wrong. Do something else. But uh, please like us. Click on that uh, subscribe button below. And, and also click on the bell uh, next to it, the subscribe button, to receive notifications of all the upcoming video podcasts we're going to release. Ashley, one of the one of the biggest moments in your career has got to be uh, when you won the Jerry Seinfeld Challenge on the Tonight Show with the, with Jimmy Fallon. Here's a good. Unfortunately, now we don't have the right to show it, but there's always a but to everything. But tell us what the experience like was like here. Oh yeah, it it was uh, it was amazing. So I basically the Tonight Show put a call out and they said um, we want to do a segment where people are reading jokes to Jerry Seinfeld, and so I thought oh, I submit to everything. Um, so I I just sent it back and I thought nothing would ever happen because that's normally what happens. You never hear anything back. Yeah. Well, about a month later, I got a random email that asked me to sign a release form. And even then, I, they didn't say you were going to be on TV or anything like that. They just said, will you sign this? Yeah, sure. Whatever. Nothing's going to happen. And it was Thanksgiving Day. Um, and I just moved. Like, we'd only been in our house a, a couple weeks on base. And um, so we didn't have TV or anything like that. We So I, I was like, am I really going to buy Hulu Live, pay $50 to watch myself not be on television? Like, you idiot. What are you doing? I went, my husband's in bed. It's 11 o'clock at night. He's got to get up for work the next day. Do you, you don't have to, but if you want to come wake up, you can watch it. So he gets up, we, we watch. And I thought that it had, it was actually not going to be shown because uh, Jerry Seinfeld had talked for a really long time. And you know, the, that real estate, I figured maybe they just cut the segment yeah. and they were just having him talk. And then they said, all right, we're going to go to the break and then we're going to come back. And they, the first person they announced was me. Wow. And um, I was, I thought, oh my goodness. When I made the video, I tried to do it in a way that made sense. Yeah. I, whenever I create anything, I try to make it so people have something to talk about. So when I did that one, I did a, a segment or a joke that Jerry had written about late night hosts. I thought, well, this could be perfect, right? They're on a late night show. It'll give them something to talk about. So. It was really neat to see them both laugh at, at me doing it. And then I didn't know it was a contest until it was over. And they said, he said, Ashley's my winner. She was very funny. And I was like, oh, my goodness. Oh, I used to play baseball as a kid, and I um, would uh, hit home runs. And when I would hit home runs, I remember that I couldn't hear anything. Like, it would. there's something about that kind of like intenseness where you just can't hear anymore. You just, I just remember running the bases and that's what it felt like. You're just, I was just like, what is happening? Like, Oh my God, I was getting messages from people that said, why are you on my TV? <laughs> like, I don't know. Um, but it was, they were all super nice. Like Jerry Seinfeld sent me his book and wrote, you're so funny in it. And he put out a tweet that had my name in it saying that I did his joke better than he ever did. And so it was lovely. Oh, yeah, yeah, come One is, was there a award or something that goes with that? Did you receive any? I mean, what for winning? What did you? <laughs> no, well, just a recognition, maybe. Yeah, I got signed copy of his book. I got a um, IMDb credit. It says I'm an actress best known for the Tonight Show, yeah. which is hilarious. Yeah. It's it's like you you go way back to like 1950 or <laughs> however long the the thing goes. Um, and they sent me some shirts and things like that, which was really nice. Now my goal is to be on the tonight show and do my own standup. So that's the next thing I'm coming for you, Jimmy. <laughs> I want him to let me, let me be on the show with doing my own joke. So hopefully that day will come. Do, do they, uh, uh, did they ever con you? To, uh, did you ever talk to him directly? Uh, either one of them? Uh, or, no. no. Yeah. Uh, that's pretty no. neat. Yeah, I've never had anything yeah. like that happen to me. I've, I've tried a couple of times. I've even sent tapes to The Tonight Show and stuff, and, and uh, they've always returned them with uh, no message at all, just returned them. So I don't know. Maybe they just don't like oh. my stuff. I'm a little That's concerned so. about we'll that. Keep I mean, you got to keep trying. I'm, I'm being, I'm being a <laughs> <laughs> Ashley, a whole that. I'm, I'm just joking now. Wait a minute. I, I didn't send anything. I, no, never mind. I'm an Army guy. I couldn't write the letter. Wait a minute. <laughs> Ashley, hold that thought. We'll be right back. We got a lot more to talk about, so don't you go anywhere. We'll be right back. You're watching Your Next Mission video podcast. You're watching Your Next Mission. 
proudly presented by the Cavalry Agency. They help brands dominate no matter their size. Ideas, strategy, action. This is Cavalry. Learn more at Cavalry.com. Navy Federal Credit Union, the most trusted credit union owned by members of the military community, serving all branches of the armed forces and their families. Their members are the mission. Learn more at NavyFederal.org. Purdue Global, providing affordable online education for hardworking adults. Learn more about a personalized, innovative, and world-class education at purdueglobal.edu. Veterans United Home Loans, the number one VA lender for five straight years. If you're buying, they're funding your dreams. Learn more at veteransunited.com. Now back to your host, the 12th Sergeant Major of the Army, Jack L. Tilly. Welcome back. We're blessed to be here today with Ashley Gutermuth, comedian and military spouse and just an all around great person. You can hear that from her, her talking to us right now, but I want all of our viewers to reach out to directly. Tell us about your transition. Tell us what topics you like as a cover. Remember, it's, it, this is not my show, it's our show. We're military families. We wanna reach out, all services, join us. Tell us what you want. And we wanna put it on the show to, to help our community out. You can call or text me at 844-424-1134 and I'll actually reach back out here. I may have a couple of jokes myself and reach back out here or send me an email at smatilly at yournextmission.org. Ashley, we're uh, unfortunately now, we're heading into our final segment with you today and I, I hope you enjoyed it just as much as I have. I, I just have a couple more questions. I think you've answered one of them already, but I'm gonna ask you anyway. And they really don't have anything to do with comedy. Oh, this, now you're thinking about that. Oh, dun, 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 dun. A little worried about that. But speak directly to the kind of person, that really speaks directly about the kind of person you are. You've really become a passion about uh, helping people with food insecurities. And uh, would, you, would you tell just, a, or talk to just a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. Um, well, it all started when I found out recently, and I don't know if you know this, that people need food to eat. <laughs> Oh, um, and I missed that one. I they forgot that. To live. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, it's super important. They needed to live, and uh, so I basically what what sort of sprung me on it uh, was I I go around and I give these keynote speeches to like chambers of commerce and, and conferences, and I talk about the things that are affecting military recruitment yeah. and retention and military families and how we can improve that. And so I reached out for stories, and I got a lot of really interesting stories. And one of the things that was a recurring theme was, hey, I am selling my stuff, selling my wedding rings rings to buy food. I can't afford to feed my kids. I'm active duty living on base. Um, I've done er everything I can to, you know, they're like, I have no fun in my life. We don't do anything. We don't outspend. We're just, we can't keep up. So I thought, well, wh what can I do? I um, created a Google Doc with my friend Heather Campbell, who is uh, one of the military spouses of the year for Eielson Air Force Base last year. And she's a dietitian, and we, we kind of went back and forth on how can we get people to acknowledge that they need help, which is one, a big part of the issue. People don't want to say that they need help because yeah. they're worried about their jobs, their security clearances. Um, and also, to, yeah, to just get them to accept it. So um, I have a Google Doc. I, I go into the base spouse pages and the regular pages, and I say, hey, if you need food, I'm here for you. I don't have, I don't care what your reasons are. And I have not found anybody that has abused that, who has said, uh, I'm gonna take it even though uh, I don't need it. Um, they know that it's coming from me and I'm just paying for it. And I go to the commissary and I buy, I, I have 22 families, I, I buy food and I buy all the things that I can, usually ends up about $50 a person. And then um, it's funny because once people started to hear that I was doing it, I, they would come up to trying to give me donations in the store and things like that, which was really nice. But I was it became obvious because I'm pulling two carts full of Cheerios, <laughs> <laughs> you know, through the commissary. Um, so uh, and I would then I just take that information and I drop it off on their porch. And uh, some of them I met, they would wave to me. I would get thank yous back from people. But the big thing is when people would leave. I have two questions from military one source on there that are multiple choice. And, and one is, um, 
in the past 12 months have you felt like you, the food that you bought wasn't going to last and the majority of people have said yes absolutely and the other question is have you felt like you couldn't afford food within the last 12 months and the majority of those people have said yes so i've only advertised a few times because i'm on the road a lot i need to be home to do it and it's it's really hard because it would be great to take on more people and have them say deliver the groceries or something like that and i could like collect money and and go from there but it's hard because you have to go through a bit of a vetting process because as soon as i started talking about it i had people reaching out saying hey let's figure out where they live tell us where they live and let's see uh, if we can fix their problems for them well in some cases it may be there there's a fear of retribution in their chain of command that would go really badly if i gave away their names so there's a real balance and I've actually, I'm partnering up with some organizations coming up, a, a Navy SEAL organization called Uncommon Grit, um, and also uh, another organization called Stronghold Community Pantry in Leavenworth, Kansas. <clears throat> and that's the person that runs that was the Army Military Spouse of the Year last year, Monica Bassett. Yeah. And, and um, we're going to partner up to make this a nationwide effort. So it looks like it's going to happen within the next few months. Oh, wow. Congratulations. You know, you're really right. There's a lot of people that just don't want to say anything about it. They don't want to bring attention to themselves. and They don't tell you that they're struggling. And uh, that's really where the chain of command comes in. You know, in the Army, uh, it, it used to be a requirement. I, I don't know if it is. Maybe it still is. But uh, you'd have to know where your soldiers live, where their families live. And, you you know, once a month or once every so often, you'd go by and just say, you know, you might have come by your house and just say hi or something just to check on what they're doing because you know yeah. people they want to be by themselves they don't want to tell you they got any kind of problem so i understand it well i mean in the future if we can help you let us know maybe we can you know i don't thank I don't, you so much I don't know that'd be great you, uh, i guess we can talk to my counterpart over here but uh you know if we can kick something in to help you a little bit we certainly do that thank you that's that's very kind <laughs> well you know three dollars is not going to go a long way but i mean it's a start hey that's two candy bars <laughs> uh, and <laughs> i'll take what i can get there you go i understand that you you told me a little while ago you run every day but you do something even even i haven't never heard of you pick up trash along the way uh, when did you start doing that i, do. that's a, I mean I, have you heard i've never heard anybody else do that well i've killed a lot of people so i'm trying to get into heaven <laughs> no uh <laughs> I um, so it, it does have a name. It actually started in Sweden and is called plogging, yeah. P L O G G I N G. And but I just you know call it trash picking. And basically, I am not. I I have ran every day. I've not missed a day in all that time. And I run usually three to four miles every day. And it's not like I would. People, if you're watching this and you're like, oh, I should do that. Just take rest days. It's ridiculous. Like I shouldn't be doing what I'm doing. Um, but I. I was like, I'm never going to be super fast. I did really improve from the first hundred days of me running every day. I went from 17 minute miles to under eight minute miles, which is huge. I mean, that oh, is a it huge, is huge gap. Absolutely. I, and I've used that to be able to pace chiefs. I have, we had our command chief. I, I've helped pace her for her fitness tests. I'll pace people for their fitness tests. But from within the first year, I was, I could do an under uh, a 655 mile. That's, okay that's pretty good. so and that's by running every day and you start to see that improvement real fast so when i talk to people that are trying to do better on their fitness tests i say just do one mile every day it'll take you 11 minutes and you will improve va vastly more than if you're running three miles two days a week or yeah. whatever and dreading it okay so i knew i was never going to be fast and because even 655 even though it is uh fast for me it's when you look at the realities there's something called a beer mile and i thought well i could do that you know right there's you know it's whoever can get the fastest you have to drink a beer every lap on a track and uh not throw up and then the winner is wins the beer mile and i was like oh i could do that except that the people that do that are running under fives and that includes chugging the beer <laughs> that is insane <laughs> i don't have a chance no. um so i'm not very fast i started picking up litter after i got into a car accident I was coming back from a stand-up show. It was about it was three years ago, and I was on I-5 out by Seattle, and somebody was speeding. They were doing over a hundred, and they whacked me in behind and spun me on I-5 and into a barrier. Cars totaled, traumatic brain injury, body all messed up. I went to the uh, Madigan, the hospital on base, and of course, what did they tell me? They said go take some Motrin, so I did, and <laughs> and um, but so I was all messed up from that. Yeah. 
and they thought that I had brain fluid leaking and things like that. But they said, your body's going to really hurt after being shaken up like that. You should keep moving. So I kept running. I didn't quit my running streak. and But I was, you know, I would normally run about eight-minute miles. This knocked me back to like 10, 11s. And I didn't want to jiggle my brain too much since it was already pudding. And so I started running on base. I would run on McCord at Air Force Base yeah. um, with, a, with a, a stick with a nail in it. And that's a great way to get pulled over by the MPs. That is, <laughs> what is that weird lady doing? Just stabbing the ground. So uh, now I run with gloves and I have a, a bag that I run with. I have found some weird stuff. I've found whole half gallon jugs of Jack Daniels. Um, I've found uh, just, I found money. I found iPhones, lots of driver's licenses, lots of flight line driver's badges. Um, just, you know, when you do it every day, you find some weird stuff. Well, you know, the, 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 uh, the producer put a question down here. If I was going to ask you, what's the strangest thing you ever picked up? And maybe you just answer. I guess that was the strangest thing. The money. How much money have you found? I mean, is it like five or I, 10? Yeah, probably, yeah, you know, I've probably over the years found uh, about 20 bucks worth. I found like hats and things that I've kept and, and different stuff like that. That's not the weirdest thing that I've found. The weirdest thing that I've found, I'm not gonna tell you because it's so gross. Um, and <laughs> I figured it was. It's so bad. But if anybody wants to know, you can send me a DM uh, on Instagram at Ash Gutermuth, and I'll tell you as long as you're over 18 and can deal with the nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> what's what's the heaviest? What's the, you know the, I, I I I like I said I used to run all the time. You see, so yeah, I, I I know what I know what you're probably talking about. What's the heaviest thing you ever picked up while you run? Because we talked just on the prep call. You said there's some things I had to come back and pick up. But is there a, a you know a couple pounds or ten pounds or whatever? Yeah. Well, when I I used to weigh it and it would average out to a pound a day. It's usually actually more. A lot of bot uh, bottled water and things like that. You know, energy drinks usually or vapes. They've been become popular. The heaviest thing uh, that I've carried in one go is uh, an underground utility box, which probably weighed about thirty pounds, and I ran that a good mile and a half back to the house. <laughs> Why? Who knows? My life is a never-ending challenge that I'm trying to prove something to nobody. Uh, but, but usually, if, if it's like a big cardboard box or something, I'll break a piece off every day. And then you can kind of see how just doing a little bit every day uh, benefits. And that is the overall theme of running every day, of picking up trash every day, because you can't do it all at once. But you can do a little bit and you can watch how things change how your body gets stronger just by doing a little bit how you can uh, you, you're not wheezing as much how you're able to carry more you know and just doing a little bit a day can amount to eight years and three years of picking up other people's trash well, let, let me ask you you know what i just sitting here thinking of it why don't we have a national ashley run the trash mile or something you know what i'm talking about so everybody that's in the trash yeah yeah everybody and we all collect and see what the uh, what, what do you uh, you know i think i i list, again i listened to a couple of your podcasts and i heard somebody say in pounds how many pounds of trash was that that you picked up over the years i guess if it's a pound i just yeah so it's a, about a pound a day but i picked up over a thousand pounds and i think actually my anniversary for three years is on the 19th i believe so um but you know some days it's only, it, I, I always say that it counts as long as I pick up one piece of trash. Um, I've done it all over the country. You know, the cleanest city was Spokane, Washington. Oh, wow. Uh, and, um, but you, it's interesting as you go to different states and you see the different trash that they have and the different name brands of things, you know, it kind of appeals to my treasure hunting instincts. I grew up like uh, using metal detectors yeah. and uh, and things like that. So I'm like, oh, you know, I go out and it gives you something else to do uh, as a, so you don't focus on how much it sucks to be running. Yeah. D does your husband do this, run with you, pick up trash with you? He will run with me on weekends when he's not working. He's the Air Force. He doesn't do PT. <laughs> he just, <laughs> he just. <laughs> <laughs> he just, he just well, talks around, about doing yeah. PT. So, oh, yeah, go ahead, Ashley, you run. That's right. Tell me yeah, how it felt when you come you back. Do later. <laughs> <laughs> I understand you've been nominated for the Armed Forces Insurance Military Spouse of the Year. How do you feel about that? I have. That's, I mean, that's, a, I, that's neat. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's super cool. It's a great organization, Armed Forces Insurance, and they um, 
So I won for joint base McGuire Dix Laser so I am the winner for that. And now we just go on to see if I can win for the Air Force and then perhaps overall, which would be fantastic. It's it, what's great about this organization is it creates an ability to network with all of these organizations and companies and military spouses that are doing huge things that can help magnify um, uh, my projects and I can help magnify their projects, which is really what I want to be. I want I don't have a specific thing that I do. I, I do the food insecurity piece, but I also like to talk about housing issues. You know, people have mold yes, and mushrooms yeah. growing in their in their housing and things like that. Things like EFMP, their, where their kids go to school, wait lists, all that stuff. And I want to be the megaphone for all of those subject matter experts to be able to amplify using my social media platform or whenever I get the chance to be on TV, things like that, to say, hey, these are the issues that are affecting military families, let's do something about it. Because I know that the general public with no military connection is dying to help. Yeah. When I started doing the food insecurity project, I got thousands of messages, messages from people trying to give me money. And to every one of them, I had to say, I can't accept your money. I'm not a 501c, I don't wanna go to jail. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I had to wait until I could partner up with somebody. But I tell you what, the people really care and they, uh, they want to help you know i'll occasionally get the the other side of it the people that don't appreciate one thing or another or i'll get somebody maybe from a, a different country or something that has different opinions but for the most part it is people that really want to help and support military and military families yeah i think there's a lot of people out there uh, that want to help but you're right they, they just really don't know how to help and, and who to talk to and so you know as you was talking about you know i, I just said that i was thinking about your husband Right, and I was thinking about when he comes home and you're there. How does he? How does he come into the house? And I, I was thinking he's, he probably has a some kind of helmet on, body armor, <laughs> you know, all this stuff, gloves and stuff. And he goes, Ashley, are you home? You know, sort of start getting ready. You know, I, I, yeah, I, I'm ready to come to the house. Are you okay? Because I mean, I'd be worried about that rib. That's, I'd be worried about it too. It's funny that you mentioned that because in my hand, I have something that he and I found when we were out running the other day. Yeah. And it's one of those squeezy stress balls. Yeah. And, but it is a, a rock. And it says, you rock violence prevention, which I think is, oh, yeah. that's an interesting, yeah. uh, that's an interesting mixture there. Well, anyway, he was a bit sassy the other day, so I threw it out. <laughs> so we've gone down to, <laughs> hey. He's funny when he comes home from work and uh, he, I'll usually have like cameras in places like I'm doing something stupid yeah. or I'll have a bunch of big lights facing towards like our bed or something like that. And he'll come in and I'll say, you didn't mention the fact that I had cameras pointing at our bed and lights everywhere. And he's just like, yeah, you're, you're weird. I, I don't know what to say. I'm used to it, but <laughs> hey, he's a good sport. Yeah, I know. He sounds like a great guy. Uh, maybe one day I can meet you in person, you and your husband both. Hey, uh, yeah. Yeah, first of all, thanks a lot for coming on the show. You, you, uh, people like you motivate me because they, you know, first of all, you enjoy life. Uh, you want to make a difference. Uh, it's just not all about you. It's about all of us. And we need more people like you out there, you know, spreading the word and, and telling people about the, the kind of sacrifices our military makes and, and, con and, and, continue, and continue to tell people, especially the fact that, uh, about the food insecurities, that's, that's really a shame. I've known that for a long time and, and we've tried to donate money to different organizations, but that's, that's a good, you gotta find a mission, you gotta find a focus and, you, and you, we don't live in this life that long. We think we do, but we don't. Our life is gone. So every second of your life, do something, change lives, do something to make it better for everybody that uh, certainly that you're around. Any final thoughts, anything you wanna share with the audience maybe we missed or do you wanna leave, with, leave people with? Oh, you know what? Thank you very much, uh, everybody, for listening, and thank you so much for having me. If you, if you ever want to get in touch with me or I can help any of you in any way, you can go to my website and send me a message, ashleygudermuth.com, or any of the vast social media networks. Goodness gracious, if there is social media on the moon, I'm sure I'll be on it. Yeah. <laughs> so. I appreciate the only thing that you guys are listening now, guys and gals are listening, just don't get close to Ashley because she may break your rib. That's right. That's a good morning. <laughs> hey, thanks a lot. <laughs> thanks to Ashley Gutterbu for being with us today. I'm Jack L. Tilly, 12th Sergeant Major Army, and you've been watching your Next Mission video podcast. And, and thank you for watching today. Please visit our website at yournextmission.org and, and leave me a review. I always want a good review, but if it's a bad one, I tell you, I guess I could take it. 
You can also visit our nonprofit partners there who can provide you with so many services that will assist you in your transition from the military. Also, please uh, visit our corporate partners and see all the jobs that are available. Please know we want to assist you any way we can. I'm going to say that again. Just like Ashley and her food insecurities and things she's doing for, for her community and for the country, please know we, we're a family in the military. Please know we all want to assist you any way we can. Please follow me on all my personal social media pages, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, and, and of course, Rumble. And if you enjoyed this discussion, if you have it, just something's wrong with you, with Ashley, please like us. Click on that subscribe button below. And also, don't forget, click on the bell next to the subscribe button to receive the notifications of our upcoming podcast releases. Don't forget, we want to hear you. Please leave me a message or send me a text at uh, 844-424-1134 or, or send me an email at, uh, <coughs> at smatilly at yournextmission.org. Thanks again to Ashley Gudemuth for joining us. It was just great having her on the show. At, at this point of the show, I'm always supposed to give you my final thoughts. Well, I'm going to tell you today, I am so motivated. I am so enthusiastic about, about talking to somebody that certainly cares about our country, that wants to make a difference, that wants to make a difference in all the lives of all the people that she's around. But it, she can't do it by herself. You know, if she's picking up trash once a day or if she's running a mile or two miles or three miles once a, once a day, why don't we do something? Why don't we stop and pick up trash or do something to, to make our country better, to make it look better? You know, I, I think about when you're talking about picking up trash, I think about all the stuff I probably walk by every day, and it really sort of breaks my heart. So let's, let's make this country a better country. Let's pick up trash. I think we ought to thank, uh, start a national push here a little bit. Ashley's push, pick up trash, make our country look better. But the other thing is laugh, have fun, and enjoy life. It's just too doggone short. Again, thanks for watching. Thanks to Cloudcast Media, New Mind Studios, and of course, our four presenting sponsors, Calvary HC, Navy Federal Credit Union, Purdue University Global, and Veterans United Home Loans. We appreciate all you do for our military. And as always, See you on the high ground. hoo You've been listening to Your Next Mission, brought to you by the American Freedom Foundation. Learn more by visiting yournextmission.org.